six for the Philadelphia Flyers. Number four of six for the Boston Bruins as they face each other for the second time in four days. Flyers beat the Bruins up in Boston Friday night. An entertaining shootout victory for Travis Konechny and the Flyers up in Boston. And they'll try to make it two for two here tonight. Konechny in his second preseason game thus far. And we're underway. Half is Lindholm, moves the puck into the Philadelphia zone. These teams both have jerseys that bring us back in time a little bit, Boosh. Yeah, they do. Uh, I got to be honest. I mean, we talked about the Flyers uniforms last game. Uh, I really like the Boston uniforms as well. It does. It feels like it's a, a 1988 <laughs> game, doesn't it? It has that feel, yes. We'll see if there's a few fights, if it brings us back to that era. Could happen. The Bruins, of course, coming off the best year in NHL history in the regular season in terms of wins and points. But they followed that up by losing in the first round, blowing a 3-1 series lead to Florida. And then, during the offseason, have lost to retirement Patrice Bergeron and David Krejci. And so they ended this season with a lot of question marks for a team that had such a great year last year in the regular season. Travis connecting after this puck. He lights up awkwardly. The puck is on the wall. Gets back up, appears to be okay as the puck bounces free. And now, maybe at Lysel, top prospect for the Bruins, clears his own. Joe Farabee stuffs it back in. Had a look at the combinations for the Flyers. A lot of guys who will be in the lineup in Columbus 10 days from now are in the lineup here tonight with a couple of young guys still trying to earn their spot. Here's Owen Tippett. All the way around behind the Boston net. Back out to the point. Rasmus is still in a shot that deflects wide. Cam York is battling an injury in training camp. Gets that puck back out. Now Rasmus in a shot redirected wide by Cam Atkinson. York back around behind the net for Atkinson. Centers it in front. Tippett. A drive that went wide. Boston gathers that puck. Got it to Tippett. Back out to York. And then the wrist shot. Save made by Swayman. He looks around, but he's got it in his equipment. Outstanding shift from that line. A really good shift, and it all started with Cam York. Uh, I thought he was on his toes at the blue line, was able to keep a play alive, and then made a nice little nifty little pass. And from there, the Flyers got to work, and some work behind the net. And as Atkinson tries to find Tippett in front, Tippett just misses uh, to the blocker side of Jeremy Swayman. But overall, a real solid shift from the back end to the players up front to generate some opportunities. York is seeing action in his second game, but he had not been on the ice for a couple of days as he was nursing a minor injury. It's a big year for Cam as he is expected to log a lot of ice time with Ivan Provorov having been traded to Columbus. Get the puck here is Ronnie Adder. He'll play it along. Scott Lawton will to the middle. That one's knocked down and then poked out to center by Adam Ginny. Bruins get back to it and play it into the Philadelphia zone, but Adder is there to retreat. Roll it up the right wing. Well, Kate's trying to clear the zone there. He was checked by two or three Bruins. He did maneuver it to the neutral zone. Body contact there. It's like Callahan and Lawton came together. Ginning now with the puck for Philadelphia. And he'll move it ahead. Bobby Brink moving up in the left wing. Comes to a stop. Looks for an open man. Goes to the slot with it. And now gets it back from Ryan Paling. Paling checked, but kept that puck alive into the slot. And Wade Allison nearly got to it, but the Bruins able to clear and move it into the Philadelphia zone. Well, you can see the confidence that Brink is playing with, right? I mean, he comes over the zone, buys some time, has patience to make a play. Didn't materialize in anything, but overall, you can just see the confidence that Brink is playing with right now. And the same thing is set for Travis Sanheim, who's playing in his second preseason game here tonight. Very impressive in his first one. It's a bigger Travis Sanheim. He's going on 15 pounds. There's break to Sanheim. Oh, stopped by Swayman. And the puck comes back out to Igor Zamula. His shot off a shin pad to the corner. On cue, those two collaborated. On a scoring opportunity as Sanheim stopped by Swayman. Arm goes up. We've got a high sticking indication. Chris Rooney and Stephen Hiff are your referees here tonight. Good start for the Flyers here tonight. And the players that we kind of highlighted in the in the open, delivering with some good plays. Another good play here by Brink on the off Nine wing. And uh, allows him to be on his forehand as he cuts the middle of the ice as he made a beautiful feed to the weak side. And 
Brink, a real strong shift there. A couple of good plays and continuing his strong play here tonight early on. Anthony Richard, guilty of high sticking for the Bruins. And so the Flyers get the game's first power play. And they'll send out Couturier, Konechny, Forster, Atkinson, and Ristolainen. The chance this could be your power play number one to start the year. We'll see. Yeah, whistle stops things before we can get this one going. Well, let's see if they can get the puck to Forster. I mean, right, he's got a huge shot, and he can really bring it. And I think the idea is to somehow find him to be able to use that shot. I haven't seen it a lot in the preseason. Let's see if that can get going here in this power play. This one for 11 again, various units being used in the preseason. There's Atkinson to connect the chopped it wide of the net. Couturier jabs it back out toward the slot, but it's taken by McLaughlin, and he'll send it all the way down the ice. Bruins last year had the best penalty killing in the NHL, but then again, they were at the top of almost every list in the NHL last year. There's Couturier to Atkinson, chips to Couturier, but it's knocked away and back out to center ice. Just the line will retrieve. And now he'll look to set things up. It's to Couturier and a cross ice for Atkinson. Plays it off the wall, turns with it, but was checked. Looks hard to keep that puck alive, but the Bruins are able to clear. So the Flyers will change up. Just about halfway through the power play. Having trouble with those entries, which was a bugaboo for them last year. Mr. Linen skates into some traffic there as he's hounded by Jesper Boquist, the former New Jersey Devil. Now Owen Tippett, roaring through center ice, gains the line, holds on, and gets it back. He is the best the Flyers have at those power play entries. And now Frost with a shot, deflected and went wide. Brink retrieves out to Sanheim. Santa back to Bobby Brink. And then across it goes into the middle for Tippett. Couldn't quite handle it cleanly. Frost backhands all the way across ice. Brink will play it. Brink outstanding on the power play. Really can spot people. Find Santa and then Brink again. There's on in with it. Right to center. Does. Here's Tippett in the slot, but it went off his skate. Couldn't quite line it up. Does do well to get that to Santa. Now Frost. Brink holds down low. Takes. Denied by Swayman in tight. And he's got it, but outstanding puck work there. Back and forth, the Flyers went and into the net. Yeah, and it's, uh, it's unfortunate. Frost's original pass to tip it in the slot, if it would have been on his tape, it would have been a bang-bang play. That didn't work out, yet the Flyers continue to pressure the puck and regain possession, and then Brink is able to make a real nifty feed to the back door. And you can see Noah Cage just couldn't elevate it enough as Jeremy Swayman got across in the splits, and was able to grab that with the glove, but the second unit with some real impressive zone time. Bruins able to gain control off the draw and clear, so they've killed off the power play. But that second unit certainly looked good. He had the zone time. Allison shovels this one deep into the Boston zone. Swayman, the main product, lays it up the wall. Takes the brush, one of the few regulars really in the lineup for the Bruins after that puck along the wall. Bruins play again tomorrow night and then have a game after that, so they're going to play a lot of the regulars on home ice tomorrow, and then they finish up their preseason at Madison Square Garden, where Jim Montgomery, their head coach, has said they will play most of their starting line. Ryan Paley, stop, but there's Adder finding Faraby. He's all by himself. Flyers are changing. He waits for some help, and then spins the puck deep. Kates in on the four check. Gets some help from Forrester. Memphis Lindholm will play it back around. It's tipped by Ian Mitchell. He'll play it up the wall. Pitching there was York. Puck to the line and then out to center, but York does have control, but he nudges it back to Ristolainen. Who finds Gates. Penalty on Boston. High stick against York. Delayed call. And there's your whistle. It's going to be Fabian Lysel, former first-round pick of Boston, it looks like. So the Flyers will get a second look at their power play when we return ways this season get your tickets at philadelphiaflyers.com get a look at bobby brink who we talked about in the open a big night for him here tonight and he's looked comfortable early on and he's known for his offensive acumen and you can just see on that off wing he seems to be awfully comfortable the vision is there he's made a couple of really good plays 
to the back door and the Flyers get another opportunity here in the power play. We'll see if he gets to that second unit and Bobby Brink once again. Forster to the puck is the first unit. Goes to work. Out to the point, York. York will risk one. It's deflected in the slot, comes back out. So York, instead of risk the line in, only change to this top unit. From what we saw earlier, here's Atkinson. Atkinson holding on. Nothing developed, so back out to York. And now Forster. York. Perimeter passing thus far. Forster takes a look. Swings down low. Couturier is set up in front. Forster goes all the way across. The pass met for Couturier. It was blocked as Atkinson couldn't get it through. Now York back to Cam. That's Cam to Cam. And now York has it again at the line. Forster. And then York. Forster once more. Again looks cross as goes to Couturier's side of the net. Boots in some traffic now behind the net. And actually tries to help him out. They get it back out to Atkinson. And now York. Deals with the Forster, Forster, the pass in the middle. And now it bounces back to York along the wall. Skip to Atkinson, 45 seconds remain in the power play. Flyers have been in the offensive zone the entire time. So I haven't gotten the puck in on goal. Couturier to connect the, and now Forster the drive and the save by Swayman. Forster retrieves. Back out to York, little wrister, save Swayman, rebound. Couturier jab at it, but it bounces back to the corner. Forster gets to it again, but his pass to the point off the mark. and. So they will change up, but great job by the Flyers, Bush, of retrieving the puck and yep. keeping the puck in the offensive yeah, zone. Absolutely, and, and I like the idea that they finally were patient enough to find a way to get it to Forster on the on the weak side for a one-timer. Swayman made the save, but that's the shot that the Flyers are looking for. Now they have it down low as Allison for Brink. He was tripped up as Lindholm knocked the puck away, and the Bruins will clear as the power play ends. So back to full strength hockey. The Bruins are offside at the Philadelphia line. Well, that top unit, you mentioned the change with from Rista Linen, who was manning the, the first unit. The first go around, it was Cam York the second time, and thought it really yielded some uh, really good zone time. And Forster, who made a really nice feed cross seam early on in the power play, was able to get that one timer off. A little bit more comfortable on that second power play that top unit did. Yegor Zamula is paired with Travis Sanheim at even strength here tonight. Number five, he's up to 200 pounds now. He's put on, over the last couple of years, he's put on 20 pounds. Has that big, long reach, and the Flyers really want to see what they have in Yegor. He is no longer exempt from waivers, so a good chance he'll stay with the big club, but who knows? The Flyers have a lot of young defensemen that are trying to make this club. Here's Frost. Around behind, out to Adam Ginning. His shot was blocked off. And now Morgan Geeky will move it up. Oscar Steen dumps it deep into the Philadelphia zone. Sam Erickson still waiting to see the puck in this one as we approach the midpoint of this first period. Maybe he'll get a look at it here. Mitchell lacrosse, that shot goes wide of the net. And Mike Callahan sent back around. There's Callahan to get to it. And he'll drop it back to Mitchell. Mitchell, a shot goes wide, bounces out this way. And after it is Broquist, but he was tied up nicely by Ginning. Faraby tries to clear, but he's checked. And the first push by the Bruins. Handled by the Flyers as Zamula gets to Ginning. And back to Yegor. And he'll go out through center. That deflects into the Philadelphia bench as the door was open. Well, we talked about battles here at training camp and the importance of the young guys to show what they got. Forster's been engaged in this game so far. Some contact early on on the power play. Yeah, we're looking for him to shoot, but he made an awfully nice feed cross seam, and then later on in that power play, able to utilize that one-timer for Forster. A good start to this first period for him as he seems to be engaged in all facets of the game. Shots are 5-1, so there was another shot on Harrison from Mark McLaughlin somewhere along the line. Goalie. You like to get it, save or two earlier. Oh, yeah. I, I was going to make mention of that earlier. It, it's awfully difficult when you watch play at the other down, uh, the play down at the other end of the ice. I mean, you want to feel some pucks. Well, he gets one there as that shot is deflected out of play. We will be back. Miss the podcast.
Good start for Cam York in this game. He's been on his toes early on, keeping the play alive in the offensive zone, finding ways to get pucks through from the point. Again, hammering down the wall to keep a play alive. To me, for Cam York, it's a you talk about elevating, getting more minutes uh, in his game. It's going to be about finding a way to have an impact on, on the hockey game on a nightly basis. And I think if he shows a little bit more of that on-your-toes type of assertiveness, and I think it'll only serve him well. I mean, the message inside this Flyers locker room, too, is don't be afraid to make plays. So don't play safe. Safe as death. And I think early on, Cam York has shown a, a propensity to be on his toes, which is a good sign. It's what the coaching staff likes so much about Emil Andre's play. He's not in the lineup here tonight, but he's made mistakes in training camp. But he's not afraid to go right back at it after making a mistake. And we want to see much of that as possible in Cam York's game. Bruins trying to set up in the offensive zone. Lindholm dropping it back to Fabian Lysel. Lysel's pass is deflected away. And now Travis Konechny. Konechny will move it up. And sift that through into the Boston zone as the Flyers will change up. Kick down toward nine minutes remaining in this first period. And even there just a few moments ago, a good stick by Cam York to close on Lysel. Really took the play away. So. We saw the offensive side of things, and now a good defensive play there by York. Puck deflects into the Philadelphia zone, quickly swatted back out by Adder. And in by Dan Runa of the Bruins, and now Adder has it back. Here's Travis Santa, Rick Wise, deep. Cannot be handled by Forster, and because he did not touch it, that becomes icing. Jim Montgomery is the head coach, former Flyer, of course, nicknamed the Legion of Doom line, and last year won the Jack Adams Trophy, leading this club to its best record ever. Great to see Jim doing well. And John Tortorella, who has, I think, quietly been very happy with this training camp. Yeah. He's been impressed with some of the players and thinks that some have really deserved to get more ice time in these games. You know, when you, when you hear talk towards speak, too, he, he's realistic about what the expectations are at the start of camp. He understands that his camp is difficult. It's going to take a little bit of time, but I think he appreciates the the effort that has been put forth by his club and the response by his club in the last several games. There's been some good performances by several players. Shot from the point by the Bruins. The flex out of play. It was Renouf who took the original shot. But off of the stick and then out of play. Well, Sam Harrison is 23 years of age. Very interesting goaltending situation, though, behind Carter Hart for the Flyers, Bruce, because he does not have to clear waivers, but Felix Sandstrom, Cal Peterson do. So while Harrison probably has played well enough to be the backup goaltender, other factors could yeah. somehow get in the way. You're right, it does. And the business of the game gets involved, right? And we'll see how it plays out. I just from a, a strictly skill standpoint, I think Garrison's ready to be a full-time NHLer. He's got the size, he's got the presence, he's got the calmness in the net. Uh, he put himself in position last year with a really good year between the Phantoms and the time that he came up here for the Flyers to, to, to be ready for that opportunity. We'll see how it plays out, but uh, there's no doubt he's put the work in and his game looks really sharp right now in camp. There's a shot to the point. Deflection and the save made. Brink got his stick on that shot. And Slayman forced to make the save. Now, Geeky the other way. Former Hurricane and Kraken. That's an interesting combination. Now he's through it. As Brink will move up. Brink with a pass to Ryan Paling, who has a couple of goals in the preseason action. He has impressed everybody with his play, especially getting in on the four check. He's going to head off the ice on the change as the Bruins move the puck to center. That was McLaughlin chopping it out. Zamula takes over. To Atkinson. Who admitted he had butterflies the other night, but wow, in the second and third periods, looks like Cam Atkinson from two seasons ago early in the year. The Flyers get that, they've added a heck of a hockey play. Moving on up is Lindholm. Drops it off. Boquist. For Parker. He'll move it into the slot. The shot. That one blocked as Ian Mitchell couldn't get it through. Now behind the net. Away from Santa, I'm nearly too many men on the ice for the Bruins. As Mitchell will flip it in. Santa back, has to deal with Boquist. Now it's shoveled by Connecty, but he turns it over. Renouf has it. Renouf holds, makes the move on Zamula, takes it around behind the net, and then sends it to the other side of the ice. Here's the shot by Zell. It bounces into the blue, and Harrison, very alert, able to jump on top of it and get the face off. 
Well, the Bruins with their first real sustained zone pressure in this first period and started with a good pass by Matt Patra to find the late streaking. Help me out there. Ian Mitchell. <laughs> Ian Mitchell, the, de <laughs> the defenseman. Uh, I thought it was a dramatic and, pause. No, I was, I was trying to find it, buddy. Uh, and, a, and a good block there by Owen Tippett. And that's one of the hallmarks of Tortorella's game, right? Uh, he wants his players to be blocking shots, and Tippett certainly did there. This is not a lineup full of household <laughs> names for the Bruins. Uh -oh. A lot of checking of the roster sheet on a night like this. There is Couturier fighting off a check. The brusque is over. Play it back around behind the net. Charlie Coyle going to be a key component for the Bruins this year. It's gone from a number three center to either a number one or number two center with the retirements of Bergeron and Krejci. There's Walsh. Charlie Walsh pivoting. Turns, holds, plays it along to DeBrusk. Bruins are set up in the offensive zone. DeBrusk holding on. Ristolan and Markson. The puck goes back out to Walsh. He'll float one. It's a body in front. Where is it? It pops free and Konechny jumps on it. And a whistle stops play. Must have been a penalty behind the play. And apparently there was. Flyers don't agree with the call, but they'll be shorthanded when we come back in a scoreless game. 14 Philadelphia minor penalty hooking. Sean Couturier sits in the penalty box for the Flyers. Their first kill of the hockey game. And you can see tangled up in front of the net there with Fabian Lysel, or excuse me, Charlie Coyle. You can see his sticking on the hands of Coyle, and that was a call that was made by official Chris Rooney. And so the first power play for the Bruins. Lindholm will deal it to DeBrus. Now Lindholm and DeBrus continue to play catch. Moving to the other side of the ice. Montra has it there. He's 19 years of age. They have high hopes for him. Pass into the middle. Meant for Geeky. Never got there. Zamula laid out. But the Bruins do fish the puck out of Zamula's equipment. Move it back to DeBrus. Jake. Moving it to Pontra. And outside of the net. Coyle in front. Geeky. And he scores. Well executed play by the Bruins. And the power play gives the Bees a 1 0 lead. Well, initially. Zamula made a great play uh, on that same area where he laid down and intercepted a passing lane. This time elected to stay on his feet and coil. God, I think there's a little bit of luck involved in that, right? A no look pass to Geeky coming down the slot. It goes through the legs of Zamula. And you can see right there, Ryan Paling not able to get back in time, and that left Geeky wide open. But you know, for a defender there, if you can find a way to get your skates angled a certain way to kind of block that passing lane. That's what you want to do. As I mentioned, Zamula laid down early on the first one. It worked for him. This one is the ever so slightly opening of the legs, and Coyle found that lane, and Geeky's able to pot it home for the 1-0 lead. Geeky signed as a free agent by the Bruins to a two-year deal after spending a couple of years in Seattle, and they're hoping he's their third-line setter. And he gets the Both pass the from by number 39, possibly their lead Geeky. setter. Charlie Coyle, that looked like a number one center. Yeah, yeah. Helper right that there. was a heck of a play Coyle. there. It was something you'd expect to see from oh, Patrice Bergeron and David Krejci. Yeah. So maybe he, he learned on the job from some of the best. So, one nothing Bruins. Only Tippett plays it to the Boston zone, gets it back. His centering pass reflects into his hot play. Yeah, hey, you know, the one thing about Boston, I mean, you think about last year and the guys that they've lost, and you mentioned Charlie Coyle perhaps being their number one center. I, You know, to me, I, I don't see it. You know, I think this is a, a team that's going to have some growing pains this year. They're going to have some bumps along the way. They've got a solid defense, good goaltending, but I think they're going to have a, a, a tough time either scoring goals or finding a way to control the game in the middle of the ice with their centers because they're missing two big guys in Patrice Bergeron and David Krejci. We'll see how it plays out, but certainly this will be a different Bruins team than we saw last year. A big role for Charlie. I mean, his career high is 21 goals. I mean, usually you see that more from a third-line center, and last year that's what he was, and he was outstanding in that role. Maybe the best third-line center in the yeah. NHL, but when you become a top-line center, a lot of things change. I seen the call here, and you look at the Bruins last year and actually for his career, Dries Bergeron, the numbers are very impressive, Bush, but it's so much more than the numbers with this guy because yeah. it's one of the best leaders in the history of the sport. Yeah, I think the culture that he helped instill uh, in this Bruins.
locker room. I mean, he, he was a, a bridge from the, the old guard to the new. There's a turnover in the slot, and the shot by Geeky deflects out of play. After a crisp start to this game for the Flyers, they have uh, struggled a little bit here of late as their passing is a bit off. The Bruins will be missing Bergeron, and then when you lose him, and then lose Krejci on yeah. top of that, I mean, it's tough. But you, I thought they'd go out and get somebody in the offseason. They feel as though Coyle and Zaka deserve a shot first. It, it, it makes sense. I mean, Zaka's a guy that I think, it, you know, it, it was a good trade for them, for Eric Hall. It seemed to work for both teams. We'll see if he can make that next step. It, it's going to be hard to replace, almost impossible to replace Patrice Bergeron. I mean, he's a, he's a classy guy, a terrific leader. But the Bruins probably feel they've got other pieces on the back end and in goal that can kind of stem the tide until they can figure things out. But as I mentioned, it will be a different looking Boston hockey club and we'll see if they'll be able to find a way to get back into the playoffs. I'm sure the Bruin fans are expecting it no matter who is wearing their sweater on a, on a nightly basis. Flyers are offside right there. I will say at this time last year we were saying the same stuff about Boston. They were going to be without uh, three players, Marchand. Yep. Grizzly early on in the year uh, McAvoy because of injury and they were getting older and Jim Montgomery is a new head coach uh, the talk was they were possibly going to miss the playoffs they ended up with the best record in the history of the league so uh, you know as you, you look at those numbers I mean so impressive right at the top of the league and everything that leads to 65 wins and 135 points so the Bruins probably internally are saying they said this about us last year we're fine but they're not the same as they were last year. There's a shot from the point by Walsh that's deflected to the corner. Patra after it there. He's taken down by Allison. Good hard work on the wall by Wade. Tamula steps in. Paling now. Clicks, but Walsh keeps it in. And his pass into the middle. Patra with a fancy pass there. Allison picks it up and gets to Santa. I just kind of seem stuck in the mud right now as the Bruins have picked up their checking intensity on the four check. And is having trouble really maneuvering the puck. Well, an opportunity here. Potch is going to get a, a hooking penalty, so the Flyers will have a chance on the power play. See if that can kind of change the momentum a bit. There's the touch up by the Bruins and the hooking infraction. So power play number three ahead for the Flyers. Boston number 51, minor penalty for hooking. Yeah, doing some good work. The Bruins were in the offensive zone and then. Pacha right here, the stick in on the hands, and that's one that he just don't like to see as a coach, right? If he gets stick on puck, that's the that's the optimal thing, or drive through the through the defender. Pacha gets his stick in on the hands, and now the Flyers get a power play with an opportunity to kind of even this game here with 2.58 to go in the first. Uh, Jimmy Montgomery's probably saying we really have turned the momentum of the game around, and now an offensive zone penalty like that, and that's a learning experience for the 19-year-old. Flyers, as you say, try to take advantage. The delay here could be a timing issue. You know, just to put a bow on the Boston stuff, it, people tend to think that the Bruins didn't go through adversity last year, right, until the first round of the playoffs. But you're right, that first month with the injuries that they did have and the job that Jim Montgomery and his staff did to get this team prepared to do what they needed to do. I mean, it really set the table for a historic year by the start that they had with the players that they had out. And it all started with uh, the goaltender on out, and it was a magical year for them in the regular season. Unfortunately, disappointing finish in round one. Well, all right, Flyers on the man advantage. York to Forrester. Forrester, the shot! Samo and the rebound just out of reach of Atkinson. Who would have had a lot of net to shoot at. Bruins able to clear it all the way down. York gets to it and gets to Forrester. By the way, coming up between periods one and two, you won't want to miss this. Keith Jones, we couldn't stay away, Boosh. Must see TV coming up. <laughs> he'll, he'll be our guest. Yes, he'll be a guest here in the booth. I think he knows the way here. You better talk, too. <laughs> he'll give us one word answers. <laughs> Cam Atkinson, around behind, and now here's Forster. 120 remaining on the power play. Couturier, drop it off to Forster. Nice and looking things over. Always looking for a shooting lane, but there's nothing there. So go across. That one eluded Atkinson. He does get it to connect. It. He's then checked. Couturier back out. Atkinson. Center point York. And now Forrester. Forrester back to York. He'll fire. That's off a body in front. Connecting. Tips to Atkinson. Across for Forrester. He spins back with it and gets to York. 
They set up again. Forster takes the shot. It's a skate in front. Couturier digging away, but Swayman able to cover up. Now Forster had the right idea there, looking for that high tip as he was coming downhill. And Swayman able to come up with the answer early on in the power play. Forster setting things up with the shot. I mean, he's a guy that can really rip that puck. And when you shoot it like that, things can happen at the net. It went off of Couturier and kind of squandered out to the weak side. Unable to generate an opportunity. And then later on in the power play, there's that high tip. Smart play by Forster. Last two power plays, he's looked awfully comfortable and really generating chances. And smile on his face. As he tries to secure a roster spot. Another timing issue here. I believe 41 seconds remaining in the power play. As the puck comes back to wrist line. Pass off the skate of Tippett and then cleared all the way down. 90 seconds remaining in the period. Bristo starts up. He's got pressure behind him. He'll drop the puck back to Tippett. He finds the seam and gets the puck in. And now Brink got that through. Kate's back to Ristolainen. Brink takes a look. Back out, Ristolainen. And now Brink again. Brink holds. It's the line and again. The line and blast. That's blocked. Bounces to Cates. Trying to get it to Brink. Brink. Brink back to the middle, but that's intercepted by Steen. No clear. And out of the box is Potter to play it into the Philadelphia zone. So the Flyers 0 for 3 in the power play here in period number one. A period that has 45 seconds left. I think there was a couple of opportunities for Brink to work it down low there. He's more unwilling to do that and I think because of it the room for able to get shooting lanes and negate any opportunity. There'll be a shot there. Sleeman awkwardly made the save but then the Bruins get the puck and dark to center. Two on two as Richard will play it into the corner. Bad eye to it. Able to elude a couple of Bruins although he's knocked to his knees in the process and now Lindholm keeps the puck in. Across ice it goes Mitchell for that shot save. Harrison he gets bumped into. Paling able to get the puck out of harm's way. And he'll bank it to the line. Kept in by Lindholm masterfully. Comes across here, Richard. Richard into the middle. Mitchell, the blast went wide. Back on Lindholm. He's checked by Allison, and that'll do it for period number one. So the Bruins get the only goal of period number one. Morgan Geeky able to beat Sam Harrison. And Boston, a 1 0 lead after 20 minutes of play. Tonight's first period between the Flyers and Bruins is presented by your Philadelphia area Chevy dealers. Is it Chevrolet.com? Coyle made a terrific pass through the legs of Zamula to find Geeky. That stat line is incorrect. Minus one is not what he is. That was a power play goal. So let's uh, let's clean that up for Igor as they most defensemen do pay attention to plus minus. Yeah, they're having some trouble with uh, some of the. Clock elements, shall we say, yeah. here at the building tonight. It's preseason for everybody, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Well, underway here in this second period. Joel Farabee. Big year for Joel as he had a full summer of training. Has been feeling good physically. In all 82 games last year after that serious neck and upper back surgery. But comes free. Sanheim keeps it in. Bobby Brink spinning with it. Tried to set her. It's blocked. And now Lindholm, but his pass stolen by Couturier. Back to Sanheim. Sanheim with a shot. Bounces to Brink. Brink turns, fires his shot. Blocked. Now Zamula fires. Blocked. Ruins a tremendous job getting away in the way of shooting and passing lanes on that shift. A good start, though, for Philadelphia. A little bit of a change as Brink takes Konechny's spot on that top line with Couturier and Farabee. Tip it. And Frost and Atkinson. That line stays the same. They get it in front and they score! Ken Atkinson from the slot. And the Flyers tie the game at one. That's got to feel good for, for Atkinson, don't you think? He mentioned that he had some butterflies going into that game on Saturday night. Thought he played a good game in that in that effort against New Jersey. Good job by Tippett to get in on the four check, create the turnover. And Atkinson alone in front of the net is able to 
put that puck home a fortuitous bounce as Frost is just trying to get that puck in deep. It goes off the shin pad of Tippett right to Cam Atkinson, who's in the right position, is able to sneak that backhander past Jeremy Swimming. And the puck set all the way down here for icing against the Flyers. Cam Atkinson, of course, missed all of last year. And also a serious surgery, but comes back and just looks like he's ready to go. Yeah, he certainly does. And you can see here the pressure by Tippett, the contact, and that loosens things up for Frost to regain that puck. And yeah, it's a fortuitous bounce, but the work by Tippett to get in there, get a body on the Boston defender, and when you do that, typically good things happen. And Atkinson just happened to be in the right place at the right time and put it home to tie it high up this Boy, game. the puck in the offensive this is zone. Tippett. Tippett and Frost. Along with number 48, Morgan Frost. With the helpers on that goal. Five, one minute, Frost set seconds. the puck toward the corner. Tippett doing the work and it deflects off of him right to Atkinson. Really good hard work along the way. Sometimes you get that fortuitous bounce. Tippett here being trying to work on Oscar Steen. Steen still came away with the puck but the centering pass knocked aside by Ristolainen. Now Tippett gets to Frost, who will carry out to center ice. Frost to Atkinson, he'll feather that one in. Flyers will begin to change. Riley Walsh is pestered by Frost, who comes away with the puck. Frost trying to center to Konechny. He's got it. Konechny, the shot, he scores! They have deflected in. And the Flyers, bang, bang, just like that, take a 2-1 to one lead. Oh, well, it was a good start to this period. I mean, it started with the... The shift by Couturier, Farabee, and, and Brink, and then it carried on with the goal by Atkinson, and a bit of a line change as Konechny and Lawton hop onto the ice. Frost was going to the bench for a change, was able to find Konechny coming off the bench, and Konechny able to shoot this one right underneath the pad of Swayman. That's one that the Boston goaltender would like to have back, I think. Wasn't able to get down quick enough, and that finds some daylight underneath the pad. Yeah, I thought it might have gone off the defenseman in front, but it was off of Swayman and in. Fires goals. So a couple of goals separated by 58 seconds. It's that it Keith Jones effect boost. Comes on the air. Same period. And the team's just on a roll. He changes everything, doesn't he? He's a difference maker. Yeah. At least he'll tell you that. <laughs> will get this puck into the Philadelphia zone. Jenning comes over. Potter turn around, centering pass, ends up in the stick a lot and hammers it to the neutral zone. Moquist has it there, stepped into by Lawton. And Adder gains control. To Jenning, and then off a of connect it in. Paling getting it in the four check. He's been doing it all training camp. Frees the puck up, bounces to Konechny, into the middle of Zamula. The shot went wide. All of that because of Paling just getting in on the four check. And He's been the best the Flyers have had in training camp during scrimmages and preseason games of and getting he, it on the fourth. Yeah, and even there after that on the reload, uh, I, a good stick position able to intercept that pass. It could have probably been a tape to tape play for Boston to get out. It wasn't. Details of Paling's game is there early on. And hit on the wall here by Sanheim. Keith Jones talking about the weight gain. Travis, I thought it was 15, might have been even more than that. But he's just a bigger individual now. And See some of that strength showing up in the board battles. Bruins move up here. Former flyer. Patrick Brown misfired in center. Worcester's pass though intercepted. Bounces away and finally flung to the Philadelphia line. Couturier has it there. Makes the deep and deals to risk the line. And he lost it, but Couturier is there to recapture. Down the other way for Brink. Brink to the point. York is shot, looking for the deflection. It's loose, bounces free, and is cleared up, but not out. York hustles back, keeps it in. Off Couturier, behind the net, Brink. Try to get it to Farabee. Farabee hit hard along the wall, and DeBrusque will clear the zone. And York with another good job of getting that puck through from the point. He's done a really nice job tonight in making sure that those pucks are getting to the net. Turnover by Ristolainen, and DeBrusque with the steal, got it down low, and that one did not go as the shot taken by Fabian Lysel. Couturier will lob it deep into the Boston zone. And now it's DeBrusque. Flyers changing. Cross ice it goes. Lysel for Coyle. Riley Coyle spins it toward the net. It goes wide. Lysel will do the first to it. 
His pass tipped by Atkinson out to center. And now Frost steers it through the neutral zone. Bruins get it back. Just past the five minute mark of this second period. Fires have scored too quickly here in the second to take the lead. Riley Walsh, Lysel, he's checked by Tippett. Riley boards, it bounces off of Coyle. Lost in Coyle, joust the puck to Tippett. He'll steer it around behind the net, bounces back this way for Adder. Johnny Adder realizes the Flyers were changing, so he just occupies the puck for a while, and now looks for some help. Gates is there with him. Adder kicks it free, and then it's taken back. And then recaptured by Cates, who gets to the circle, dropped it off for a lot. What a smart play that was by Cates, but then Konechny tipped it to the point Adder was not along the wall. It goes down the ice. Well, I think Cates also, too, recognized he was on the wrong side of it, quickly got on the right side of the puck, and they win that puck back. Flyers winning a lot of battles here in this second period. Good stuff. Lawton for Konechny. He lost it in center. Sanheim pressured, spins, holds. Banks, but Greer knocks it down. And now A.J. Greer with a shot, and it was deflected. Brad Spicean on it went wide. Lawton tips. Cates got it to center. Stopped at the red line. With the back row collision as Adder went down heavily. Greer was there. Adder appears to be okay as he pops back up, and a whistle stops play. 13.39 to go. Second period. The Flyers now on top. Dear Freedom. Most definitely be counting on for offense this year. Connecting, of course, off his career high 30 goals last year. Atkinson, a 40 goal scorer in this league earlier in his career. Off this draw, the defense is on for the Flyers. Lindholm goes across. Matty Carlo is shot off the glove of Harrison. And back behind the net. Haling played it to the other side of the ice. Allison kicking after it. Oquist could not emerge with the puck off the wall. Now Allison steps to center. Tried to one-hand it in, but it's taken back by Boquist. Plenty of jobs open in the bottom six up front for the Bruins. Boquist, one of the guys who has a chance to get one of those spots. He stopped here, and Zamula will play it the other way, out of the reach of Paling. Patra will get it to Boquist. Boquist behind the Philadelphia net, fanned on his pass out in front, but it bounces back to Lindholm. He's checked by Paling, but still... Push the puck forward. Now it's tipped back out, and here's Faraby jumping on it. Joel Faraby with speed tries to go wide on Carlo. One of the toughest defensemen to go wide on, though, is a long reach, and Carlo takes it away. Patra oh! fling into the Philadelphia zone. And wrist the line and retrieves. Pass for Brink. Bobby Brink through set with speed tripped up. Penalty coming. Brink has drawn another penalty against the opponent. And as the Bruins get to it, the whistle blows. Power play number four ahead for Philadelphia. Boston number 38, minor penalty, tripping. Yeah, the Flyers return to the ice for the 23-24 season with an opening night matchup against the Vancouver Canucks on October 17th. All fans get a Flyers opening night t-shirt presented by Fanta. Tickets are on sale now at philadelphiaflyers.com. Patrick Brown ends up in the box. Bobby Brink just using his speed right there. Yeah, and you can see the confidence he's playing with again. I mean, carrying the puck through the neutral zone, drawing the penalty, and the Flyers with an opportunity Close now to open up the lead. Dangerous pass. It's intercepted. Flipped ahead by McLaughlin. And now Anthony Richard, first to it in the Philadelphia zone, drops it back. Flyers will recover. There's a break right through the blue. So <laughs> Harrison appeared a bit startled by that, but the Flyers move on. Here's Konechny all the way across. That's behind Couturier. And now Steen will move back with it for Boston. He's got Greer with him. And he's playing across. And the Flyers looking to get their bearings here on this power play. York to Couturier. Steen rolls up with it. The right wing dish to Atkinson. And he'll set things up back to Konechny. And Pass into the skates of Cam. That's a TK, and now he'll get to Brink. Brink holding on. Settles and finds York center point. And now Brink flings. Save made off the redirection by Konechny as Swayman smothers that one. I mean, you just see the offensive acumen that Brink has. I mean, his head's up all the time in the offensive zone. He's looking for sticks. He's looking to make plays. 
She's awfully comfortable. Uh, when you get on this side of the blue line, see Konecki presenting that stick. With heads up play and good save there by the Bruins. Net minor too, as he had to fight through a little bit of traffic with his defenseman in front and Couturier as well. New unit out now. No, no. Oh, to the puck. Tip it helps him. Go on for Cates in the corner, trying to spin away from the checking there. And again, good support as Frost gets it back to Santa. And now Frost and Tippett. And Frost once more, looking to return it to Tippett, but it was blocked. He'll get it to Cates. Out to Santa. Happened it on the power play, Santa. I'm to Cates. Cates to Tippett for the blast. Blocked in front. Cates back to the puck. And now Frost. Must have nowhere to go at the point, so he had to turn back with it, and the puck deflects free. Patra checked by Forster, but kept him away from it. And now Patra a chance to clear. He will not. Good keep by Sanai. Roars up with it to pass down low. Cates back out. Frost. Frost to Cates. Cates. And on that pass in front, the power play is over. Here's Sanai, and he's checked out to center. The Flyers will take the opportunity to get a full line back out on the ice. Says it's back to five on five hockey. The 0 for 4 in the power play, but they've had a lot of zone time with their power play. Just haven't been able to get a lot generated in and around the net. And a little bit of a change from the first period. They switched Forster and Brink on the units, trying to spark something, but still nothing to show on the power play for the Flyers. Adder to Faraby. Quickly, one back to Faraby. We'll move it to the middle. Here's Ginning dealing it off in the left wing. Lot into the middle, hoping for Paling, but it was checked. It was actually Adder trying to get it to Paling. Paling does recover it anyhow. And now it comes across to Adder for a shot. Looking for the deflection from Faraby, but it went wide. Now Lott back out Ginning. Ginning a wrister. Save made by Swayman. And he will hang right on to it. We pass the midpoint of regulation time. MVP member. Right around. They're ready for the game starting at 7.30 with Phillies pregame live right here on NBC Sports Philadelphia. And NBC Sports Philadelphia Plus. Streaming on the NBC Sports app. There it is. It will be rocking tomorrow. Great weather. Warm temperatures. Phillies ready. Right. Yeah, go Phillies. And Flyers. Great start to this period. A winning puck battle. Getting in on the four check. Disrupting the Boston defense. And it's detailed as well. Look at the stick positioning of Morgan Frost here. Intercepting that puck on the wall, and then he makes a play. Yeah, he gets a fortunate bounce, but he created that opportunity with a detail of his stick. Uh, the work ethic's been there for the Flyers at the start of this second, and it's paid off with two goals in the first half of the period. Morgan Frost, last two games have been very impressive in the preseason. He has eight shots on goal in the preseason action, too. Now has a couple of assists, and that's another guy. The Flyers looking for another step up from last year, and I think he's he's poised to do that. Yeah, he's armed with a nice two-year contract. Right. He should feel good about that. Now he can build off of the second half of the season he had last year. He seems to be a lot more comfortable in this preseason. That's a good sign for the Flyers. Nice and first to rumbling up through center. Miles it all the way in. The puck comes back out. This line is ready for it. Runs it back in along the boards. But back to the point. And an interference penalty has been spotted. It's I assume on Philadelphia because they had the puck. And indeed it is Ryan Paling will go. 25 to Philadelphia minor penalty interference. So power play for the Bruins. It'll be their second. They scored on their first. See Paling right here. Sets the pick up on Ian Mitchell and kind of allowed a little bit more time and space for Forster. I, I don't know if there's much there, but Mitchell tripped over him. I, Chris Rooney saw it differently. Number 25. That was one of the, the Flyers have had four Two power players plays. Players. Yeah, one, exactly. One, 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 57 seconds. Although, Ryan Paling, well, I say they don't do that, but I think human nature. How to do it. Here's DeBrusk. They'll flip it in on the right wing. Potter. 
Reaching for it. Tried to play it out to the point, but the active stick of the Flyers front three and knocks it out to center. Swayman will move it back up, trying to take advantage of the Flyers who are changing, but was able to get back. Hotro will get to Lindholm. Lindholm finished fourth in the Norris Trophy voting last year. And this team's playing its full lineup. He's on the second pair. Not bad. How about that? And that's the hope for the Bruins and their fans. Yes, they're missing the top two centers, but their decor and their goaltending should be right near the top of the NHL. So that can keep you in a lot of hockey games and win you a lot of hockey games. Geeky. Long, DeBrus. Moves it to the middle. Coyle checked in the puck squirts out to center us. And if their power play is good and Pasternak can find yeah. a way to get they still have that 50 guy. plus. I mean, they still could be a dangerous team, but there just still remains to be a lot of questions to me that need to be answered for this Bruins team. We'll see if they're able to get off to a good start. If not, you wonder if they hit a little bit of a bump in the road early. How do they handle that adversity, especially coming off a first round loss last year? It'll be interesting in Boston. There's no doubt about that. Great work there by Cam Atkinson, who is an outstanding penalty killer. Stole that puck and then maneuvered through some traffic. Got it back. They send it all the way down. Waste a lot of time off this Boston power play. 12 seconds left on it. Mitchell flings in. Tippett. Good job to control that puck. Shovels it, but it's deflected. Steen in the slot is shot. Bought up by Erson. Rebound. And that one put toward the slot by Justin Brazo. Now Mitchell has shot block. Adder has it. But he'll clear. He'll go in on goal, so no ice. By the way, Pasternak, I'm surprised he didn't lobby to play in this game. He has just destroyed the Flyers. 14, 12 goals in 14 games, and he had two, of course, in the preseason game on Friday. Yeah, that's okay. He can take a night off. Yes. <laughs> Flyers don't mind. And Harrison doesn't mind, and some good work by Cam Atkinson, who able to hang on to this puck and kill some time, get it back to Cam York. You mentioned his ability to kill penalties, and he's got a real calmness to him when he's out there on the penalty kill. I thought that was a good kill for the Flyers all the way around. Really not much going on for Boston, except for that last chance in the waning seconds of the power play. Well, the Flyers penalty killing, they need to improve. They've added some potentially really good penalty killers. Cam's kind of an addition because he didn't play last year. Ryan Paling another one. Here's Forster. To take that shot there. He'll now move it back out. There's the one in the drive, but seen all the way by Swayman, and he'll hang on to it. Now you mentioned, you know, with Forster there, an opportunity to shoot the puck down the wing, and you know, John Tortorella talked about it this morning, that maybe for Forster just maybe putting a little bit of pressure on himself. You know, I think he wants to do so well. I think when you're feeling well and, you do, and you're doing good things, you're able to get a step and get that shot off quickly. He certainly can shoot it. And I think right there, just a little bit of fumbling the puck and the play goes away. See if that sharpens up. Break the wraparound, got it in front as Allison drove the net, but it bounced away. Yeah, you can see the frustration on his face. And the puck just rolled off his stick as he was about to make a play there. Here, Brink could not get his yeah, Maybe he did. It elude Callahan and Watt, etc. Back in. I can attest to it. I mean, as a young player, you want to do so well all the time, right? You, you just want to show that you you belong, that you're you're going to be a key piece to a team. So sometimes you do put a little pressure on yourself, and the Forster he can kind of settle things down and get going with his game. There's Greer with a shot in the glove, saved by Erson as the Bruins look for a deflection. Erson keeps the Flyers on top. Chaos Corner. Learn more at PhiladelphiaFlyers.com. And take a look at our Wells Fargo great check of the game. It comes courtesy of Tyson Forster early on in the game. Finishes Riley Walsh along the penalty box wall. Job by Forster. You could tell early on that he was engaged and that he was a willing uh, participant in this game. He's looked good on the power play, good body, good stuff from Forster in this game. Off this face off, Bruins looking to get control. Oh, Kate's had other ideas. Now Noah has it. He's 
checked from behind. Gets it back, and now no move it ahead to Konechny. Konechny back for Cates. He had Lawton going to the net, but the puck comes back to Sanheim. We'll play it around behind, that's cut off by Lindholm. And he'll move it ahead to Greer. Bump by Sanheim. Still sitting on the wall, bouncing around, and finally Hotra will get it back to Mitchell. Shards cut off, and Konechny will... Actually, Bokris was cut off, and the Flyers get the puck back to the Boston line. At the red line, bouncing around, and Lindholm lob it in. Bruins will change. 5.42 left in the period. Flyers with a 2-1 lead and a couple of goals here in the second. Tippett roaring on up with it. Cross ice, pass. Atkinson trying to get it to Foss. The pass to Tippett is really not... In a great spot for Cam. He did the best he could with that to try to set up Frost. Now Atkinson has it back to Tippett. Tippett turns with it back for Atkinson. That's off a stick. Kept in by Ginning. And just played into the corner. Tippett poked at it. Frost after it, but instead Brandon Paolo. And the brusque will clear, and Ginning will just dump it back in. I added after the puck. Connect the had it. He'll look for Faraby. Faraby now behind that. Back in front. And Katuri broke his stick in the shot attempt. Now Adder to Blast. He scores! Faraby went to the net. Adder the Blast. And the Flyers lead 3-1. to one. Well, Katuri certainly had a, a real good opportunity in the slot. Unfortunately, the stick breaks for him. And then... The puck gets to Adderd at the point, and Faraby does a terrific job in front of the net of creating a screen and able to get out of the way at the last moment. See right here, Couture, whoa, that would have been a great opportunity, didn't work out, and then you can see Faraby, actually he doesn't even get in front of Swayman. I wonder if this catches Faraby at all. It might have, it might have nicked off of Faraby's leg and into the net. And Swayman not able to come up with that save for now to be Adder's goal, but a good job by the Flyers to open up the lead. Offside at the Boston line. I think that might have glanced off Yeah. Now, I thought initially it was a good screen, but seeing how Swayman wasn't able to pick it up, it would lead me to believe that he thinks this shot is going wide. It either caught Carlo or Faraby, one of the two. I think it's Faraby, yeah. yeah. But good job getting to the net. Good job by Adder to get it there. Flyers goal, scored by number 23. And a Ronnie solid Adder. second period for the Flyers. For now, they'll give it to Adder, but that last look 14, was pretty definitive. And yeah, oh, now here's a shot up high. There's a from Steen, and Nine, Sam eight, able to eight, handle that, and he'll hang on. I will say thank God for replays, because what I think I see up here sometimes is wrong. I thought it was a terrific screen. Turns out there was no screen. Maybe the screen was provided by the Bruin player up front to DeBrus because he was trying to get out and block it. That could have kind of not allowed Swayman to see that puck, but there's no question that I think that goes off of Faraby. At any case, it'll be a point for Adder. Should read eventually Faraby from Adder and Couturier. And the Flyers, who had not scored in the second period in the preseason coming into this game, have now scored three times here tonight. In the second stanza. Boyle and Couturier after the puck. Faraby. Such a key part of the mix for the Flyers this year is Joel Faraby. Remember, in a, game in which, a season in which he played 55 games three years ago, he scored 20 goals. I mean, over a full season, that's a 30 goal season. He's quite capable of that. And all of a sudden, you talk about Tippett, Gates, Faraby, Atkinson, Couturier. And uh, maybe a forced or a brink added to that mix up top. You've got several scoring options. When you look at them on paper, if you really study the lineup and you talk about guys staying healthy and guys taking their games to another level, it's not inconceivable to think that this team could be a pest to play against. I mean, I talked about it with Jonesy uh, during the intermission. I think a lot of teams are underestimating the Flyers, but they may have to do it at their own caution, because I, I feel like if some guys can stay healthy and guys can perform, there's some goals in this lineup to be had. I should mention Morgan Fox is part of that forward mix as well. Rizzo for Boston, lays it off for Ian Mitchell, defenseman up on the rush here. Try to center it, deflected back behind Richard. 
and the Flyers move back the other way, speed for connecting. Up the left wing, touch to the middle, connect the hole, fires, and it goes off the stick to the corner. Tippett surges to the rebound, reverse check, gets the puck back out to Ginning across for Adder. Hop past him, so just fired in along the kick plate. Tippett takes a look around, gets it to Ginning, whose shot bounces wide. Now Frost, good job to use his body to shield, plays it back out, Ginning a shot, blocked in front by Mitchell. And he will bank it out to center ice. And so he ticked down to 140 remaining in this second period. Frost gains the line, tucks it down low, and then flips off to Atkinson across now for his line. And he could not handle it out of his skates. Loquist gets it past him. Tippett could not handle Patra. Patra hangs on his pass into the middle. A shot there, rides high. Grabs off of Erson is Carlo. Fired away. Not a lot of action for Sam Harrison, but you got to be ready. You got a two goal lead. You want to make sure you go into the intermission with at least that. And a good opportunity for Boston here late as Patre able to find the late charge. And oh. Carlo actually doesn't even get to Harrison as it gets redirected on the way in. It looked like by Boquist, but still good positioning by Harrison. Yeah, definitely went off the stick in front. This will be icing on the Flyers, unless Allison gets there, he does not. And we're being told in the truck that Harrison does get a piece but of it with a shot. never lies. Well, let's see. Yeah, it's coming high. There's one stick. That's Boquist, and then, oh, oh yeah, there, there it is. is. The old shaft of the stick. Yeah. I, know. I think it was, by then it might have been going high and wide, but. Uh, don't don't let the facts get in the way I of know. this story. I, I will say, give, they, him the give him the shot on goal. Yeah. Exactly. I know I would have been screaming for it when I was playing. I didn't think a member of the goalies union was about to take that <laughs> save away from Sam. Last minute of the play in the second period. Who no one tells everyone here. We're into the final minute of this second stanza. As Orser on the money with that pass to Paley. Into the middle, Allison trying to make a deep and lost control. Swainham couldn't cover up. Orster first to the puck. I'm in that Allison. Allison is checked by Carlo. Forster is strong in the puck again. Got it to Paling. And then out to the point. York will play it in along out of the reach of Allison. Lindholm. And play stop. Puck hit with a high stick. There's Hampus Lindholm. The guy you mentioned is being fifth in Norris Trophy voting last year and a good pickup by Don Sweeney from Anaheim underrated pickup and then signed him to an extension look at that plus minus <laughs> plus 49 I don't, don't tell me that stat is a waste of time I mean you're going plus 49 you're doing something right yeah. it can be deceiving a little bit that stat but when your number is that high you're doing as you said you're out there creating and not allowing a lot of bad stuff again that's been his M.O. most of his career. Of course, he was in Anaheim for quite a while. Hey, you remember back in Anaheim, too, they had such a good young defense, didn't they? I mean, oh, yeah. for so many years, Lindholm was a big part of that group. Sammy Vautman as well with Cam Fowler. Cam Fowler, yeah, yeah. he's still there. And they seem to be trying to retool that Anaheim defense group now. But Lindholm found a new home in Boston and seems to be really comfortable wearing that spoke B. I mean, they gave up quite a bit for him. I mean, a first and two second round picks and a couple of prospects. But he's worth it. As the guy who we interviewed in between periods will tell you, those uh, top pair level defensemen, you know, if you can get one, you get them. Yeah, they're hard to find. I mean, obviously you want to draft them, you want to, you want to develop them. But if you if you don't have them, you got to find ways to get them. And if you're going to get them, you're going to have to give something up to get those guys. And drive by Zamula that's like they have officially changed the goal to Joel Faraby so he has his second of the preseason that angle shot by Couturier as the horn sounds ending period number two good period for the Flyers they enter it trailing one nothing they leave it up by two as Faraby Konechny and Atkinson all Shots like the line coming up between periods two and three we'll get a little bit of the big question is, will he take another leap this year after getting that full summer of training in and preseason's any indication he might be ready for that? Yeah, well, with, with that strength comes confidence. 
And with confidence comes results. Hey, so yeah, that's the whole for Joel Farabee. Underway. In the third. Bobby Brinkman playing along. Brandon Carlos won back by Farabee. He'll throw it to Lindholm. Lindholm able to elude Brink. And move it off Coyle's stick, but that's cut off beautifully by Zamula. Nice read by the youngster there. I know that was one area the Flyers coaches were talking about with Yegor is not having that big gap as the team moved up through center, being able to read plays. But right there, see they move in past him. So, again, the good and the bad with the young defenseman. Here's Lysel dropping that off. Carlo there for a shot, and it deflected and went wide. The brusque to it. Quick pass. And then the centering pass from Lysel is intercepted. Tippett goes the other way with it. Frost is joining, but the Bruins are back. Tippett will drop it to Morgan, but he was quickly checked. Slayman gathers the puck and covers up. Well, the Bruins trying to get something going early on in this third period. What a good stick here by Cam Atkinson. You see he lays that stick down. And think about Mark Stone in, in, in Vegas. He's so good at that, the timing of it. You know, you don't want to do it too early because then the player can sauce it over that shaft of the stick, but good timing by Atkinson breaks it up and allows the Flyers to go the other end of the ice. A shot by York that's blocked. Morgan Geeky moves up with it. Bring it in and now York will connect the redirect pass by the rear intercepts that. York will move it to the other side of the ice. Just the line in. Steen pursue, Greer, to Steen. And now uh, Ristolainen's in there. And he'll punch it out to center ice. The second half of last season, Ristolainen was so good. Uh, those puck battles along the wall, he rarely lost one. Mitchell, winding it in. Forster shuffles it back out to center. It's on the money. We've got Allison. And he'll take the shot. Safe, Swayman. Clumsy rebound left out in front, but taken care of by the Bruins. And now moving back to center ice. Ginny from center into the bread basket of Swayman and he'll hang on. So it'll be a face off in the Boston zone. Wade Allison, of course, full season in the NHL last year. He was second among all rookies in the NHL in hits and worked on being a north south player. That's something that John Torrell talked about with him a lot. And as we tick down in the remaining days of training camp, let's see if Wade makes the club. He understands that he has to earn his spot back. He is one of those players we're talking about that is not wavering set. Turnover here by the Flyers. And the shot goes wide from Walsh. May have deflected. Akra has it. Turns with it. Walsh gets to him and knocks it away. Now Adder. Adder paired with Jinning here. They are a pair for some of their time with the Phantoms last year. Long outlet into the skates of Forster. Played it beautifully to Paling. I'm not sure Paling expected Forster to handle that so well. And the puck's taken away. There's another one of those shifts boosts where Forster did two or three things really well, but you're not going to see anything in the scoreboard for it. Puck comes to Brink. And he's going to shovel one, hoping for Couturier. No icing. Couturier pokes at it. Now it's Carlo up the wall. And Patrick Brown, the former flyer, will play into the Philadelphia zone. Frank has it. He'll get to Santa. And Santa, I'm always looking to move up on the play here in his action in the preseason. The Flyers like to see that. Couturier in the slot, and a tippet shot takes off and finds Glass. Tippet weaving his way, looking for some room. They're going to move it around behind the net. Atkinson back to Tippet. Now Couturier, in front of Atkinson, oh, what a save by Swayman. Great spot by Couturier, Atkinson robbed by the Boston goaltender. Oh, what a heck of a save there by Swayman, a beautiful feed there by Couturier, and really two good opportunities on that shift. The first one by Tippett that went high and wide. York dumps it in, enough for a drop it off. Mitchell gets to Coyle, Coyle back to Renault, it's broken up. Atkinson trying to dig that puck free, but Coyle had other ideas. Now to Brusk. He rolling up to the neutral zone, but he lost control as Ristolainen got his stick in there, and there's some covers. A couple good opportunities for the Flyers on that last shift. Couturier able to 
find Atkinson on that back door, and Atkinson gets a lot on that shot. He's just not able to elevate it. He's got that bottom hand, making sure it's good and strong so he doesn't flub the shot. I think he got all of it, just not able to elevate it. Terrific save by Swayman. Terrific feed by Couturier. Face off one by the Bruins. Callahan, a shot fought off by Harrison. Rebound rattles around in the slot area, but Harrison holds his ground. Konechny having a little difficulty getting that through. It does eventually make its way to Lott, and he'll wind it in. Swayman, good job to knock that down. Callahan checks. Stick gets tied up as Cates. And Cates is going to get called for holding the stick. Cates, the stick just got tied up in his equipment, but he's going to be called for holding the stick, and so Cates will go to the box. 27 Philadelphia, going to look at penalty call. Free hand by Cates kind of holding that stick from Callahan up, up against Callahan's body. Another look at it at this angle. Right there, yeah. At the very end there, he did grab it. Great calls made there. Stick kind of found its way to his glove, but he then did latch on to it. So he sets. Number 27, now Cates. Two minutes for holding this. Third power play for the Bruins. Their only goal of the game was scored with a man advantage. And home dropping it back for DeBrusque. And now it's tipped forward. DeBrusque carries on. DeBrusque powers off the wall with it, but good coverage by the Flyers, and Paling will flutter it down the ice. Jake DeBrusque looks like he's ready for the season. The power stride going. Wasn't that long ago he wanted out of Boston. Yeah, he seemed to be a happy player last year, wasn't he? And a happy player brings results. Hot foot. Back to Lindholm. DeBrusk. Lindholm. Now DeBrusk once more. Coyle heads to the net. Matra gets it to Coyle now. Side of the cage. Looks to get it in front. Flyers close that off. Lindholm. Other side. Matra. Youngster. Settling it. Back across for DeBrusk. Got through but went off. Big skates to the corner. Matra. Pass knocked down by Ristolainen. Moves it ahead to Couturier. He's got Atkinson. It's a, a Faraby should say it's two on one. Faraby with Couturier. The pass through is broken up. And now Coyle the other way for Boston. And he'll stop before he gets to the line. The Bruins are changing up. 32 seconds remaining on the power play. Mitchell right up the middle. On the left side. Steen. Let's sit in. Good job by Jennings. Seal off the Bruin four checker and the Flyers clear it all the way down. Now I sell to the Philadelphia line with some speed. Drops it back. Who is checked and now Mitchell. Boquist turning with it is Steen for the shot blocked by Jinning. Rebound back toward the slot to rush out Lysel is knocked down and it's connecting the other way but it's passed for Watt and is not away. Power play is over. Flyers back to full strength. So the Bruins now one for three. With the power play in this game, they still trail by two. Just over six and a half minutes into the third. Ian Mitchell will set up. Mitchell a chance to make the team. Acquired Taylor Hall deal from Chicago. But back to the point. Enough to Carlo into the middle. That bounces on the skate. Back to enough. Now Carlo will bounce it wide of the net. Patrick Brown. Arched by Ristolainen, held his arms up, didn't want a penalty call. Worcester could not clear as he lost his stick. York will get to Ristolainen. Trying to get it to Paling, but he was bodied. Now Ristolainen has it once more. Flyers spread out a little bit, get the puck to Paling as the Bruins were changing. Forster will tip that puck into the Boston zone. Bodied by Carlo. Boyle is there. Moves it back to Carlo, gets tangled up with the referee. The Flyers poke the puck free. And it comes back to Zamula. Swats it back around, and now Swayman's going to melt it down at the side of the cage. We'll step aside. Third period action. Dear Sharp. Turnover rush there by the Bruins, and he did. And now Zamula bats it ahead. And Atkinson will get to Zamula back to Cam, and he'll just fire in as the Flyers need a change. 20 to 12 are the shots in favor of Philadelphia. 
Bruins without a shot in their last two power plays. And just three so far here overall in the third period. Flyers have outshot all their opponents since that forgettable first preseason game up in New Jersey. Well, you think about it, they played pretty well in all those games. As that shot is deflected out of play. The first game, again, fresh off the bag skate and three yep. spirit and scrimmage. They didn't have many legs, but the game uh, at the uh, Islanders, at Boston, then the home game here the other night. And tonight, why is it? Actually had the better of the territorial play. Yeah, I would agree. I, I think in that first period they came out the better team in the first 10 minutes. Had a little bit of a, a lull in the first, uh, but in the second I, I thought they played really well. Started to win some puck battles, make some plays in the offensive zone, and overall I think it's been a real positive night for the Flyers. And go back to that game last Friday in Boston. I thought they showed a lot of a lot of resilience in that game and a lot of guts. It was an exciting hockey game and. Since then, I think the Flyers have really been uh, playing some good hockey here in this preseason. To be sure, the Bruins are kind of a skeleton crew here tonight, but the Flyers were kind of a skeleton crew in Boston last Friday and beat them. So, you got to play with who you have. Turier swings this puck out through center. Lynn home over to get to it. Had it intercepts. Pass off a of skate to Farabee, and he'll just nudge it in. To the Boston zone. If you go back to that game last Friday against Boston, you, I, I can't talk about that game without talking about how good Cal Peterson looked in that game. Some huge saves uh, when he entered that game at the halfway mark. You know, tonight it's Sam Harrison that's playing, but give credit where credit's due. I thought Cal Peterson uh, acquitted himself very well after uh, that first night that didn't go so well uh, against the New Jersey Devils. Jury jumps on this puck. Flyers are at the end of his shift, so he'll just stuff it into the Boston zone. Yeah. I don't think he had much of a chance early in that first preseason game, but as Kurt said, when the team's playing really poorly, goalie's got to make some save, right? Trying to keep you in. But he did rebound. You goalies have to have short memories. I don't remember <laughs> what you just said. That's how short my memory is. <laughs> Shows that you were a good goalie. See? <laughs> you I, I, just, to I, just your good it, I just learned it now. I, I learned it too late. You're always telling me about your good saves, though. You remember those. <laughs> Here's the pass out from McLaughlin. He had to go off his stick. Kept in by Walsh, but gotten right back by Zamula. Agor Zamula. Size things up. We pass the midpoint of this third period. He'll get to Sanheim. Now Lawton. Lawton will connect me. Ducks under a check. Got it back to Lawton, who's still wearing the A. Bates. Gonna keep that puck alive behind the net. Connecty comes in to aid him in the fourth check. And then there's Lawton. Good support all around. Get it back out to Ginning and across for Adder. His wrist is blocked. Bounces to the corner of board where it's tipped by the Bruins and Greer. Could not clear. Good keep by Connecty, but now moved ahead by Walsh. Moves Adder to Lawton, and in it goes. Pretty simple game being played by the Flyers. They're up by two in the third. That's the way I'm sure John Tortorella prefers it. Quick sell, overtaken from behind. I should say Lysa. Has to be confused with the Flyers' prospect. Ula Lixell. Just the line in around behind the net for Frost. Centered it in front, and the save by Swave and Atkinson. Didn't get all of it, but did get it toward the net. Now Ristolainen has to fend off Lysell. Lysell ends up with the puck, but threw it to the middle where Atkinson knocks it away. Oregon Frost steps to center. Off to Tippett. Into the middle of York. Down low in front. Oh, maybe one pass too many as the Flyers couldn't finish it off. Atkinson. Touched it back. Tip it. Pass. Takes the return feed. And try to pass himself. And it's cleared out through center. I said they were keeping it simple. And then a couple of sequences were maybe a little too much passing. But I seem to call nonetheless. Not a good chance for the Flyers that goes away. Sam Harrison's looked good in this game. Not a, not a ton of work. But... When he's been called upon, he's been square. I think he's been calm in the net. I think that when I watch him play, that's the one thing that stands out to me is that he has a calmness to his game that I think is 
a, a real important quality to have for a goaltender in National Hockey League. It was being six foot two, he's got good size, making sure you don't overplay certain situations. He's got that calmness, he's looked good uh, in the limited work he's had here tonight. Allison to Zamula, a little wrister, deflected but went wide. Well, in his very first appearance in the NHL, he's shown that what we were just talking about, that short memory. Remember that one? That blitz for some goals, gave up a goal in his first shot, and then got taken out of the game, and then Carter Hart got hurt, and he came back into the game, and he was unbelievably good. And you gotta know he's disappointed as he sits in the bench after being pulled to end up going back in there and to play well shows you something. Yeah, because that can go awfully bad yeah. real quick. Yeah, that says a lot about a guy that's able to bounce back after something like that. Will bounce back after these messages. As summer comes to an end, your advantage. An extra pass there by Konecki trying to find Frost. Uh, net front. Atkinson with four shots on goal. and I think he's looked really good. And that's a real positive sign for this Flyers forward group. And both he and Couturier are getting that rust off. But for Cam, only his second game. Couturier's third. Cam, it seemed like the rust was off after one period the other night. He almost looks like he's in mid-season form. Offside ball is flying. You can just see he's, you know, he's awfully talkative on the bench. He's got a smile on his face most of the times when he gets to the bench, and that, that tells me a guy that is feeling good and having fun and enjoying the moment, even for a veteran guy. I mean, this is an important preseason for him. I mean, probably the most important of his career to make sure that he has the confidence after these couple of games to know that he can handle the rigors of the of the regular season and so far he seems to be passing with flying colors play there made by brink on the four check winds up with the puck his shot stopped by swayman bobby brink great work to get the puck and then ends up with the shot well, john tortorella said this morning that one of the qualities for bobby brink is that the puck just seems to continually find him and that's exactly right this is a prime case of that puck just can stay in with him. And he put the work in, and you can see when you put the work in, oftentimes you do get rewarded. And he had a good opportunity in the slot, but a good save there by Jeremy Swayman. Flyers get to this puck. And actually there, Kate's wiped out, so there were no passing options. Now a lot. Back on, Connecty to Kate's. Back for Connecty, cutting in on net. The shot goes up high. And off the glass. York. To get that through, it ends up with the ruins. Callahan locks it out. Mr. Linden had to go off of him. Richard carries up with it. Anthony Richard dropping that back, almost tipped the center by Cates. Lawton jumps on it. Scott Lawton right up the right wing. Guides it to the middle. Cates had it, dropped it back off. Picked up by Konechny. Konechny the shot, and that goes off the stick and out of play. We've ticked below six minutes to play in the third. The Flyers by two. Physical play there by Cam. Tip it to the puck. Moves it into the middle. Frost. Frost reaching for it. He'll just send it wide in the net. Bounce out the other side. There's Atkinson. Atkinson got that through to tip it, but then tip it was stripped. And then the Ruins move up with it. Geeky. The Greer and then back to Geeky. Spins it along the wall. And Lysel. Stripped at the line by Tippett. Tippett. With the puck, three on two for the Flyers. Drops it back to Frost to tip it into the middle off the skate. And it bounces to Swayman who covers up. Well, the Flyers return to the ice for the 23-24 season with an opening night matchup against the Vancouver Canucks on October 17th. All fans get a Flyers opening night t-shirt presented by Fanta. Tickets are on sale now at PhiladelphiaFlyers.com. The chance for the Flyers there is Tippett strips Lysel at the defensive blue line, and they go the other way, and Tippett trying to find Atkinson on that back door. Didn't connect, but a good chance for the Flyers once again. Bruins have still managed only 11 shots on goal in this game. Here's a bucket. They at one point had 12. The Flyers have been so good defensively, they lost one. Yeah, on that there. happens uh, every once in a while. But it's been a while since they've had a shot. Was it that shot that went off the shot, perhaps? Perhaps. They may have taken that save away, despite our bidding to give the goalie the save. 
Almost get one there. The brush goes to that, but it takes off and finds Glass. Now the big shot by Carlo rattles around and then bounces up into the air. The brush trying to play it. Take it into the wall. Paling. Let's play that, please. No James Van Riemsdyk either for the Bruins here tonight. He's now a Bruin, remember. Nebraska shot. That's blocked by the new 25 for the Flyers. Ryan Paley, you felt that one a little, I believe. Yeah, great block. Great timing on that block. As Paley is kind of smart as he gets to the bench. And for JVR, a good opportunity in Boston. I mean, he might play second line left wing uh, in Boston. And obviously, will get some significant power play time as well. We've entered the... Try to have four minutes to play in this game, Bush. Did you see that block? Oh man, that was going up high too on Paley. He got that left glove up. Blocks his face, takes it off the right shoulder. I tell you, as a goaltender, I admired forwards that would do that and get in the line of fire. I mean, it's my job back there to make the save, but if guys are willing to do it. I'll gladly take their help. It is a fine line, though, right? Sometimes you want to see the shot, yeah. right? So, but what, you know, what's your preference? You yeah, want no, so you uh, know what? To me, I, I think get in shooting lanes and, and block as many shots as you can because I think it frustrates the opposition. It just makes it more difficult. Yeah, sometimes there's going to be the odd time where it gets by your defender and creates a screen, but I take my chances all the time on that. Jinning moves that puck ahead. Flyers have numbers through center. Farabee off on the right wing. Rink back across behind Couturier. Now Farabee checked behind that. Rink there again with good support. But a lot of white jerseys. Rink powers through it, but finally has it tipped away. Still after it, though, Bobby Brink. A lot of effort in that shift. Take down there by Jinning. Heard the Boston bench call for penalty. They didn't get it. And now Farabee will play it in as we tick down to three minutes remaining in the third. Flyers still up by two. Connecting with his steal, but he already not the center going cross ice. York is there for it. Swan indicates, and now York. Off lot and stick it into the Boston zone. Callahan is able to escape Gates. Clutches the first time. Noah follows right after him. Connecty comes in. Puck ahead for Boquist. And now the puck handled right in front of the Philadelphia bench by Lawton. And Connecty spins it. And by the way, happy birthday wishes out. Happy 80th birthday wishes out to Joe Cadillac, longtime team service director. Also, he's in PR. He's an original flyer, one of the best. Oh, yeah. Uh, happy belated birthday, yeah, Joe. Two days ago, he was here at the game. Honored up on the big screen. We got it two days late. Forgive us, Joe. Now 80 years old in two days. Here's a spring pass ahead. Greer. Checked by Santa, but closed really well. Empty net now for the Bruins. Swayman just getting to the bench as Lindholm plays in. And play is stopped. Tonight's Flyers game on NBC Sports Philadelphia is presented by Wells Fargo. Together we'll go far. And by Toyota. Dear tough terrain, bring it on. Toyota, let's go places. William Penn getting a good look at things. Jeremy Swayman getting a look at things from the Boston bench with six attackers up. One forty-six on the third period clock. Jinning will one-handed to Eddard. Sends the high pop fly to the neutral zone. Mitchell spins away from Paling. And going back to Mitchell and off coil sticking in. Jinning is there. Dropped it off and coil was ready for that. Back to Mitchell. And across Lindholm. Not to try to escape Jinning. Good work there by Jinning to stay with him. Pokes it for even. Hotra got it back to the point. And now it's Little to Mitchell. Mitchell is shot. Blocked off by Adder. Now it's a free behind the net. Paling to it. Stops. Plays it up the middle. Hoping for Allison. But winds up in the stick of Lindholm instead. Last one to play in the third period. Pass to Bruskville. Backhand into the Philadelphia zone. Less than a minute remaining in regulation. 
Sitting fan on that, but Paling is there. Up the middle off Allison. Wade does spin it out to the neutral zone. Then home to Coyle, right back in go the Bruins. And Coyle will not get it past Ginny in the first try. Second try now to Geeky. Or DeBrusque. Takes DeBrusque to the point. Mitchell and across. Back to Mitchell. And now this way to Brusk. Into the middle. Save. Harrison rebound. He stopped Coyle. There's the puck. It's covered up. First shot in eons for the Bruins was a tester and maybe two in that sequence. But Harrison held his ground. Yeah, and a, a good read by Harrison, too, here as the Bruins work it to the far side and then that play to the middle of the ice. And you got to make sure your positioning is good, but make sure you don't overplay it either. You can overslide in this situation, but you can see. Harrison with that right skate, he's able to catch his edge and push back into position with a little bit of help from Ryan Paling. He's able to sift that puck back underneath uh, Sam Harrison, and the Flyers hang on to the two-goal lead. First shot in over 15 minutes for the Bruins. Steen tied up, 17 seconds remaining. Boquist got it back. Walsh's shot deflection, save made by Harrison. The way the players were acting, I thought the puck might be free behind him, but he had it all yeah, the time. Harrison knew he had it all the way, and, you know, that's the calmness that I'm talking about. He has a little laugh there with countryman Oscar Steen. Shots like this where there's redirects in front, it's important to make sure that you're positionally sound and that you're calm and not overplaying pucks. And Harrison, to me, is just one of those guys who just has a calmness about him where pucks seem to hit him, and that's a, that's a good sign. Ten seconds remaining. Flyers win the draw. Cam York will flip it out to center ice. Brink is there. Brink pokes it past one. He's taken down in a penalty call with 2.2 seconds remaining. And while it's kind of a meaningless play, it's also Bobby Brink's entire night. He never stopped going, had the legs going every single shift. Yeah, he was good the minute the puck dropped, and I, I think he's recognizing that, you know, this is his third game in four nights. It's a big opportunity for him. He's kind of worked himself into the mix and he's brought this attitude to to the game every single shift and he's not gonna hold up now i mean if he can get by renouf there maybe a chance for an empty netter and cap off the night in a real positive way instead he draws a penalty and it's all but done now here for the flyers a real positive game here on home ice against the Bruins. They drop the puck and that's it. For Flyers even their record in the preseason at 2-2-1. Two, two Sam Harrison stops 13 of 14 shots. And the Flyers up at the Bruins 3-1. to one. Uh, Good night, I mean, for the Flyers. I thought from the minute the puck dropped, they did what they had to do. I mean, they knew they were up against a lineup that wasn't the strongest for the Bruins. Sometimes that can lull you into bad habits, but I thought the I thought the Flyers played a real solid game aside from maybe five or six minutes in that first period. It was all Philadelphia and a real positive night here on home ice for uh, for the team in orange and Brink was good. Ayerson was good and I, I thought Atkinson was terrific in his second game in the preseason. So good stuff all the way around for the Flyers. Next telecast Thursday night, the final preseason game as the Flyers host the New York Islanders. Coverage beginning at 7 o'clock on NBC Sports Philadelphia. Then it's on to the regular season. For our entire crew, including producer Casey Feedy, director Mike Mulligan, associate producer Beth Ely, and Brian Boucher, I'm Jim Jackson. Thanks for watching the Flyers and the Bruins. We'll see you again on Thursday night. If you overdraw your... At Jersey Mike's, they freshly grill your hot subs right in front of you. You can't get that smell anywhere else unless you have one of these. Don't mind me. Take the sizzle to go. Grill right in front of you. It's a Jersey Mike's thing. Your first home sees a lot of firsts. From first loves <laughs> to first steps. Sure, it can be a handful at times. Keeping you up at night. But with help from the Home Depot, Thank you very much. you'll find the confidence to create the first place you call your own. The Home Depot. How doers get more done. Target Circle Week. Here now through October 7th with Target Circle member-only deals. Save on toys you want, groceries you need, styles you love, and so much more. Don't miss out on Target Circle Week. Join now for free at Target.com to start saving. Ford. 
You see the name driving down almost every road in America. But you'll also find it in other places, on the grip of hammers raising homes, in toy boxes, and classrooms. Because over 2,900 Ford dealerships nationwide means more people serving more communities like yours for more than 120 years. Ford, we are all in on America. Signs help us navigate our world. Signs keep us on course, headed in the right direction, excited about upcoming events, and punctuate important moments in our lives. Signs build brands, create connections, and define purpose. Signs speak with strength to communities, guests, clients, and customers. Signs create impact and grab attention like no other medium can. For over three decades with locations throughout the world, Signorama is the way to grow your business.